Hi, how's it going? After I checked out the Four Patriots power station, I didn't plan to make a habit out of reviewing power stations, but I do want to talk about the new power stations from the seemingly new company, Yoshino. Their power stations supposedly use the world's first solid state batteries. How could I pass up the opportunity to get destructively acquainted with the batteries? So I got their B660 unit. I'm going to be doing a bit of testing with it, and then I'm going to take it apart. I could go on and on about their claims, the problems I have with them, and the many things that led to me being pretty sure these units do not have solid state batteries in them. And I was originally going to do that, and I had it all planned out, but what's the point of all that if I have the thing right here? So let's just go over a few things I found while looking into these units, and then we'll get to the fun stuff. Yoshino claims their power stations are ETL certified, and that's true. I found the ETL listing. If you were thinking they were a U.S. company, that's not the case. The ETL listing shows the full name of the company. It's a Chinese company based in China. I only point that out because there was some confusion online, and a lot of people seem to be saying that the company was based in California. They do have an address in California, but it's just a little warehouse space they rent. This space, to be exact. Tons of overseas companies rent spaces like this for receiving and distributing products from the nearby shipping ports. I emailed back and forth with Yoshino to ask them a bunch of questions, including questions about their company, and I think the only piece of actual information they gave me that wasn't just parroted from their website is that they confirmed that this is their only U.S. address and their other offices are, quote, overseas. They would not disclose any details on the safety testing of their batteries other than what is on their website which claims that the batteries passed nail penetration, short circuit, and thermal runaway testing. The testing company they mention on their website can be contracted to test whatever you want, however you want. So even if that testing company did test the batteries, without the details of those tests, we have no idea what the methodology was for any of the testing or what it means to have passed. That doesn't necessarily mean there's anything shady going on, but these are supposedly the world's first solid-state batteries. You'd think the company would be excited to show off how well they do in safety tests compared to standard lithium batteries. But they don't give the details, so we just don't know. Eventually, I politely asked if, given what they do share about the batteries, are they semi-solid-state or are they full solid-state batteries? And that's when they stopped replying to me. They never answered. But like I said, I've got one here, so let's do a few quick tests and then take it apart. One of the first things I found is that the AC overload shutdown is far more sensitive than it is on other units. This unit is rated at 660 watts continuous and 990 surge. When trying to start a 3 8 inch corded drill, I had to be very careful to bring the speed up slowly or the Yoshino would fall out on overload. The drill may pull a bit over 990 watts for a fraction of a second if I just slam the drill to full speed all at once, but I was surprised how careful I had to be to speed up the drill slowly. Still I probably wouldn't criticize it, except I have two 300 watt power stations, both of which were far cheaper, and both of which start the drill no problem every time, even if I just jerk the trigger to full. I think Yoshino should consider some tuning to their overload versus time curve, assuming there is one. Maybe it's just a hard limit at 990 with no time component at all. Either way, this unit probably isn't going to be a good choice for motor loads.
On the plus side, voltage and frequency seem well regulated, coming in pretty close to dead on 120 volts and 60 hertz, which is correct for the US. The sine wave also looks very smooth. It's definitely what you would consider a pure sine wave, though it is a little bit more imbalanced than some other machines I've seen. And by imbalanced, I just mean if you look at the corner there, you can see the reading of negative 1.5 volts. It bounces around between like 1.3 to 1.5 volts with no load. And all that means is that the sine wave is slightly more weighted into the negative than the positive. And you can see that if you put it under load, even just 130 watts of load, you can see that the sine wave is no longer quite as smooth. It gets a little bit kind of pointed at the top with a bit of a squiggle and it gets kind of truncated at the bottom. Still not terrible, but it's getting a little bit more out of shape than I would expect when running just 130 watts of load. And when comparing to just the cheap GoLabs power station 300 watt unit, you can see that not only is the imbalance less, so the balance between the positive and negative parts of the sine wave is closer to zero, which is what it should be. You can also see that the sine wave under the same amount of load stays you know, quite a bit more smooth for whatever that's worth. In terms of charging, the unit doesn't charge as fast as most newer power stations do. The fastest option is the included 120 watt charging adapter, which in theory would take about five hours to charge the unit from zero to 100%. It obviously won't always be totally dead when you want to charge it, but the actual charge rate I saw from the included cord was more like 112 watts, and there are always losses, so even from 20% to full will probably take five hours. Also, while I don't have a ton of experience with portable power stations, all of the ones I've used other than the Yoshino, when charged with DC, either from a charging adapter like the Yoshino comes with, or with solar input, the cooling fans don't run. However, with this unit, the fan runs the whole time it's charging. The fan isn't super loud and it's not high pitched, so it's not a big deal, but I just was surprised that when charging the fan runs. Overall, this power station is fine. It has a light on the front. The handle has a soft rubber bit on the underside, but it's a bit wide and squared off at the top, so carrying comfort is a bit mixed. The subdued colors, the light up symbols on the buttons, and the overall design are very modern and it's not a bad look. The number and type of ports are pretty much what you'd expect from a modern power station like this. There's also an optional mobile app for control, assuming you want to create an account and don't mind putting an app on your phone that you have to grant a bunch of permissions to. Most people don't care, I'm a little weird. So I didn't do extensive performance testing, but I'll say that overall, solid state batteries aside, it's a good looking device that seems relatively in line with the market of competitive options. Clearly, many other options have more robust inverters, and many charge more quickly, but, you know, the Yoshino's fine. But what about those solid-state batteries? Time to start pulling this thing apart. I started taking the machine apart, but I did stop at a point where it was still functional so I could fully charge the batteries, and I discovered something and I just wanted to point it out quick before I move on. While charging, the battery percentage got to 99%. It was still charging at 112 watts or so from the power supply, and it said there were three minutes remaining to, tr to fully charge. Like 25 minutes later, it was still saying 99%, still saying three minutes left, and I just want to move on, so I stopped. So I don't know if maybe once I fully charge it and then started charge discharge cycles, if the accuracy of that would get better, not sure. But when I plugged it in, it was at like 80%. It said one hour remaining to charge. An hour later, it said three minutes, 99%, and like 25 minutes after that, Still said 99% three minutes, so I just stopped. But just wanted to point that out. The other thing is that the charger, even just after that one hour of charging, became uncomfortably hot. I saw as much as 63 degrees C, and that's, that's pretty darn hot. It wasn't even sitting on carpet or it wasn't insulated or anything. It was literally just sitting on my workbench here. So that's something to bear in mind. The included charger gets pretty darn hot. Anyway. Gonna finish taking it apart. All right, I got it a little bit further apart. The build quality overall seems fine. One thing I did find kind of interesting is that while all of the connectors were seated completely, they were connected perfectly fine, no issues, I did think it was kind of funny that every single one of them has this silicone stuff on it to hold it in place, but because of the way the silicone was applied on about half of the connectors, it really didn't do anything at all. So that was kind of funny, but other than that, Everything looks fine, and even in that case, it doesn't really seem to have caused an issue because 
all the connectors were still connected perfectly fine and were nice and snug. Nothing seemed like it was loose or going to fall out easily. So, But let's now see if we can get the batteries out. All right, I got the battery pack out and I'm going to begin disassembling it. Uh, all the all the battery tabs are welded onto little blocks up here, so I have that taped off for the next couple steps just to you know, help prevent shorts and if I drop something. But anyway, I'm going to keep going and try to get the, the battery pack or the, the batteries themselves out of this compartment. So I got the battery pack completely out of the holder, and they sure look for all the world like standard lithium-ion pouch cells. But I'm still going to go further. Just now I have to uh, cut the tabs at the top so I can take the individual cells out. Bear with me, I accidentally had the sound off on my camera when I recorded these clips because I was kind of switching back and forth between slow motion and standard, and I just forgot to turn the audio back on. So the first thing I wanted to do was some quote, penetration testing, but for safety reasons, I didn't want to be standing right next to the battery. Hmm, what to do? All right, so I got out my bow and arrow and you can see on the first impact, there is a little whiff of smoke, uh, possibly right at the impact. And then also as I withdraw the arrow from the battery, there was a little puff of smoke, nothing super violent, but I mean, even that little puff of smoke, it kind of tells you what you need to know. But I went ahead and shot it again. And that time when withdrawing the arrow, it did what lithium ion batteries do. There was a violent cascading reaction resulting in a lot of heat, a lot of smoke and a fire. And even a minute or two after the inside of the battery was still glowing red. So there you have it. I don't really think there's any further we need to go from here. I had originally planned to carefully disassemble one of the batteries to show the internal construction, but there's no point. Externally, these batteries are built exactly like every other lithium ion pouch cell. And when damaged, they can cascade into a violent fiery reaction, just like a regular lithium ion pouch cell. And sure, it didn't cascade the first time I shot it, and it didn't even happen instantly the second time I shot it, but that doesn't, that's nothing new. There's, I mean, I'm sure you can find tons of videos online where batteries are shot or crushed or damaged and they don't violently erupt into flames. Companies have been desperately working to make lithium ion batteries more safe over the years and they don't always erupt into flames when damaged. But the simple fact that it can, it shows that these aren't anything special. They're not solid state batteries. They're just standard lithium ion batteries, which is even further borne out by the fact that the part number on the cells leads to a data sheet for a standard lithium ion battery. And even the company itself, they post a graphic on their website showing the construction of their batteries. Now it's a very, sort of simplified generic graphical representation of the battery construction, but one of the components of the electrolyte that it shows is an organic solvent and organic solvent is the liquid electrolyte that is in a standard lithium ion battery. So that goes to show that at the very least, even their graphic on their website, Yoshino's website shows that there is organic solvent electrolyte in these batteries. And that's, what the solid state batteries are trying to get away from. So there you have it. It's pure marketing. And I wouldn't even say pure marketing. It's pure lies. These Yoshino power stations, they're not solid state batteries. They're using standard lithium ion batteries. And it's really sad that we are in a situation where companies can build and market and sell products like this without any kind of consumer protections to look into things like this and say, hey, this isn't what you claim it says. It's not as safe as what you claim it is. And you're just absolutely lying. So anyway, there you have it. Even if you like the look and the performance and features that they're offered, please don't buy these power stations. The company's lying. So hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching. Take care.